Now, in what could be extremely controversial news this week, the Royal Horticultural Society has said that autumn might now be considered more important than spring for gardening. Now, this is because climate change has meant that Britain is becoming drier in the warmer months of the summer. However, if lockdown measures do become tighter, this is potentially good news for those of us who have found peace and calm through plants and gardens while spending more time at home. I'm joined by garden designer Sarah Eberle, Dr Omar Ali de Onzaga, and author Alice Vincent to discover the different ways we can have deeper and more rewarding relationships with plants. Sarah, thank you Hi. so much for joining me this morning. So you're a garden designer famous for conveying spiritual messages through your work. And you're, you've been commissioned to design the first ever Christian garden for the Chelsea Flower Show in collaboration with the Bible Society. Yes. How, did, how did that come about? Well, um, they, they, they came to me and asked me whether I'd be interested. And once they told me it was about Psalm 23, and I read through the psalm again. It is so visual in landscape terms. You know, we talk about green meadows and still waters and the shadow of the valley of death. As a yes. designer, I couldn't, I couldn't say no. And so how are you doing, how are you doing that? You... Well, uh, it, it's about subliminal messages, really. Yes. So the garden is a bit of a destination, but it talks about the hardship of life and how the final destination is somewhere auspicious, something that we can enjoy. It has to get you in the heart. And uh, the garden is a very spiritual place for you, isn't it? Very much so. I, historically, we all have a deep ingrained genetic response to plants and nature. You know, we were all hunter-gatherers once upon a time. And to me, this interest in gardening through lockdown and COVID, how important is that walk in the park? How important is if you're lucky enough to have a garden or a window box? And all of us perhaps have just been too busy in our normal lives to notice. And as it's quietened down, suddenly people are aware of how important nature and plants are in our lives. So what have you got here? Well, I've got a variety of plants. You I mean, know, you've some, got plants. Some plants, some plants. <laughs> but I mean, I've got some lovely autumn plants showing you you know there's always a plant for every season yes. um, and we can you know with our hydrangeas we can go right through to November texture of ferns the movement of grasses texture is really important in terms of, yeah. of emotion but perhaps one of the most important this tree this is a hawthorn tree you know it may become twisted and old and misshapen but it's still beautiful and that's such a nice that's the kind of tree a middle-aged woman can really get behind absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. thank you so much for coming in Omar, now, thank you for joining us. You are an expert in Islamic culture and you're a researcher at the Aga Khan Centre in London, which has some very impressive Islamic gardens. What exactly is an Islamic garden? I would say that gardens within Islamic cultures are a circular symbol. Mm. What better idea than the earthly garden to represent paradise? Yeah. But at the same time, when we actually plant a garden, Muslims have this awareness that they are somehow reproducing the eternal paradise. So when you are entering a garden or when you are working in a garden, you are entering in this symbolic circle of taking care of nature and being a steward of And participating in representing paradise Absolutely. on earth. So what, what, do you, what do you have here? So we have aromatic plants. Fragrance yeah. is very important. Uh, in fact, uh, Muslim philosophers um, were instrumental in um, the advancement of distillation of essential oils. Uh, so yes. for those of you who are interested in aromatherapy yeah. and, and medicinal plants, yeah. you know, this is the origin. We have lavender here, we have uh, rosemary and we have basil. We also have some olive trees which are, are very important in the Quran because mm. the olive oil is uh, described as neither of the east nor of the west mm. and as a symbol of divine light. Fascinating. Thank you, Omar. Thanks for coming in. Hello there, Hello. Alice. Now, you are a three times published author and um, how did you get into gardening? Well, uh, I started on a really tiny concrete balcony in yes. South London, where I still live. Um, and one of the things that really got me into gardening was when a lot of things in my life changed. So I went yes. through a breakup, I didn't know where I was going to live for a while, yeah. I wasn't entirely satisfied with my job, but I knew that I could find stability in plants. It yes. really, it gave me a sense of certainty when nothing else was. You were worried about telling people about your gardening habit to start with, because you thought it was frumpy. 
<laughs> yeah, it wasn't the coolest thing to do a few years ago. Certainly, you wouldn't go to a party and mention your ferns. Um, and now that does happen, so I yes. think something's changed. So what is it that attracts millennials to gardening, do you think? We have been so used to instant gratification. We've mm. grown up online, we have apps at our fingertips that can deliver anything we want. And gardening isn't like that. You can't really use a screen when your hand's covered in mud, but also it's slow, it takes a long time. It mm. really delivers if you're patient. Yeah. Um, and for every tiny failure, there's a tiny success, and there's something very calming about that. And so, autumn is the new spring. What it should is. we be doing? Lots. So, uh, bulbs are probably the main thing. If you've not done an order, get them in now. They're in all the shops. It's a good time to do that. Um, they will come and up. And you don't need a big garden. You don't. Do you... I did all of this kind of stuff even when I had a balcony garden. Bulbs yeah. are brilliant if you've got small space. Those are going to take six months to flower. So in the meantime, you can get lots of winter colour from these annuals yeah. that are in the shops at the moment. So you've got pansies, you've got your heathers, and lots of bright colourful this things. This is beautiful, this lettuce. I feel <laughs> like I want to wear it to a wedding. Yes, yeah, so you can also sow <laughs> your winter crops. So yeah. this isn't... Uh, you, you'll want varieties, something like Arctic King. There are lots of winter salad leaves that you can sow now and give you gratification even when it's super cold outside. Alice, thank you so much for joining us. Sean. Now, Kate Humble is a father. We hope all of you stay safe and keep happy. And if you'd like to let a family member or friend uh, who's shielding know you're thinking of them, send us a photo and a message for them to Sunday Morning Live at bbc.co.uk. And we've had some comments on the show as well. Uh, this is about... Wouldn't that be amazing <laughs> if hundreds of you were out there and you want to say how brilliant the show is? Uh, we would love that. Yeah, oh, well, do get involved. <laughs> You're fishing, it's tragic. Please do Please. keep getting in touch and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Get in touch. <laughs> hundreds of them. Yeah.